As beginning of my talk, I would like to read a passage by the, the founder uh, of Jodo Shinshu School, Shinran Shoni, that called uh, hymns of Pure Land Masters. There moves, um, there moves throughout the history of uh, Buddhism of a uh, spirit of profound deliverance of the past masters who transmitted and illuminated the teaching. And it is the spirit of in, in energized the, the, these hymns that we are, uh, Shinran Shoni speaks of the teachers who transmitted to him the true and uh, real Shinjin in uh, which he uh, ex experienced that the heart of the Buddha Dharma. So please join me, Gasho, if you, uh, if you can, the, please put the, the palm together. My eyes begin hindered by blind passions. I cannot receive the light that grasps me. Yet the great compassion without tiring illuminates me, it, it illuminates me always. Bonno ni manako saigirarete arayuru mono osame toru to you amidabutsu no komyo o miru koto wa deki nai ga sono oi naru jihi wa misteru koto naku tsune ni watashi o terashite kudasatte iru to namandabutsu 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 um, So hello, thank you for uh, attending the Twin Cities Sangha's uh, monthly memorial service uh, for the month of February for Jodo Shinshu practice, um, this is the opportunity to uh, listen to the Buddha Dharma, the showing gratitude, recall, cherish the memories, um, memories of the, your family and the friends has already departed. Also, there is a new banner day in this month of the February, February 15th, new banner day is an annual uh, remembrance of the day the Shakyamuni Buddha drew his five degrees in the world and then attend the Pali, um, Pali Nirvana, the passing into the, the lasting peace of uh, tranquility. They reflect upon the Shakyamuni Buddha's lifelong dedication to the guiding all beings to the liberation from suffering. I would like to share the Shakyamuni Buddha's story of um, Shakyamuni Buddha's story of his life today uh, and then how great teacher the Shakyamuni Buddha was. So do you have a um, favorite teacher in your life? Uh, do you remember them um, sometimes? Um, what did they teach you? So do you have any significant words or stories or something they told or shared with you? What makes you uh, remember them so well? So fortunately, um, I have many teachers who have had a significant influence on my life. They include my school teachers, relatives, friends, and neighbors, uh, temple members when I grew up at the temple. The following is the story um, about uh, one of my teachers from my childhood. His name was Ume no Sensei. He was very young uh, at the time. He was about late 20s or so. I had him in my fifth and then sixth grade class uh, when I was an elementary school student. By reputation, I'm not sure if he was a teacher of um, uh, good uh, reputation. So uh, he was sometimes lazy, looked like. Uh, elementary school students in Japan, um, the teachers in Japan, uh, they have to, um, okay, so sorry, the elementary school that, uh, students in Japan are taught any subject by one homeroom teacher. So only one teacher teaches all day in the same classroom. So he was not uh, very skilled at music, but he has to teach music too. So his music class was like this. So each classroom had uh, the music organ in front of the corner of the room. And then he called me, Chiemi, come to the organ and then play this song uh, and then and then they just called other students, you all sing along. And then I was um, taking a piano lessons at the time. So I was able to play s somehow, but he didn't give me any notice of anything in advance. Um, so neither did he care if the students followed me or not. So he was just like, uh, let's have fun. That's all he said. 
and then also um, he smoked heavily. So about um, 50 years ago, um, Japan had a very high smoking rate. So all grown men smoked. I remember the most the people, um, I think it, I, most pe people didn't know uh, how significantly damaged the body at the time. So he sometimes the smoked a cigarette in front of the students. So however, we all had a great time with him. So if he, um, if he wanted, uh, we could stay after school in a classroom or the play at the gym. So he played with the kids um, in the gym or playground after school. On the week, even on the weekend, um, he came to the school and then played with the kids and then brought us some snacks. And then, so the back then, the most families were farmers. So the school located in a, a rural areas. So there was no one to watch the children at home. So I remember that, yeah, that it was fun time for everyone. So it is too bad that his wife sometimes had accompanied him to the school on the weekend or so. So the uh, Umeno sensei and painted the portraits of each of us before we graduated from elementary school. So he also wrote personal messages to each of us. So while his drawing was good, uh, what he said to me uh, with the portrait of my face influenced my life. As he wrote, never regret what you choose. Be a woman who dreams big. So uh, in Japan, about 40 years ago, women had a very low status. Uh, their participation in the society was uh, very limited. So the rights of women were limited. So regarding the words in the portrait, I felt comforted to know that I can have as many dreams as I want. Um, my dream was not to give up and then I did not regret my choice of my life. Um, I met Umeno Sensei almost by the accident a few years ago. So he was a volunteer teacher at uh, the school um, after he retired, um, when uh, my kids Emily and Sasha attended to the, uh, the elementary school for just for the few weeks. So he remembered me very well and he said to me, he was so sorry that he was not ideal teacher for us. So he was like, Jimmy, I'm so sorry to say I was not a good teacher at all. So he, he right, like smiled, apologized to me many times. And then I told him about that the portraits uh, and the words he gave me, he gave us when we graduated, it influenced me for the rest of my life. And then, but then he was still saying like, oh, I'm so sorry, they were not good portraits. I was not good at it or so. So whenever, Whatever he thought or said um, when we last met, uh, his words um, have been in my heart, the supporting me, especially when I felt trapped and I was not sure which way to go. Those words uh, gave me a strength and a direction. So each person has a teachers who have had a uh, significant impact um, on their lives, just like uh, Umeno Sensei. The sometimes teachers are not aware of how influenced they are. So let's talk about Shakyamuni. The Shakyamuni Buddha is often praised to the uh, revered teacher. Uh, his last teaching was one of his uh, the most important teaching. So I'm gonna share the picture. Maybe um, you already seen that before. Hold a second. Uh, Yes, so this is the picture I wanted to share today. Uh, let's see. Can you see it okay? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So um so this is the famous um, picture of the Buddha's uh, final moment. Uh, Shakyamuni Buddha traveled around the country for 45 years spreading his teaching. When he was about uh, when he was uh, 80 years old, he became ill and then uh, predicted that the, after three months, he would enter Nirvana, the lying beneath the, the Sara trees at the Kushinagara. 
He continued to teaching his disciple until his last moment. He entered the deep tranquility after he had completed his work at this um uh, at the world's great uh, world's greatest teacher. In this picture, you can see that uh, he was a remarkable teacher for all sentient beings. So you can see um so many people, um including like um the people from different places monks and um, nuns um lay people uh the upper middle and lower classes people maybe even some demons um you know uh, bad ones uh usually be called uh the demons has the the red faces and blue faces or so uh, many kinds of animals and birds and even insects so the so you can see that the uh, um you know uh so many followers and then the beside him when um trying when they wanted to hear that uh, his teaching at the last moment just go now okay so yeah the buddha's last words to his disciple after i leave this world make the dharma your place of refuge, the make your life, make yourself a light. All things in the world are impermanent. Follow the Dharma diligently. The last teaching is Christ Shinran Shonin's true teaching, practice, and realization, Kyogyo, Kyogyo Shinsho, the chapter on the transformed Buddha bodies and land, the Keshin Domonri, the 71st article. The commentary on uh, Mahaprasamita Sutta states that explaining that the four uh, reliances. When Shakamuni was about entering Nirvana, he said to the uh, bhikkhus, the, his disciples, "From this day, from this day on, rely on Dharma, not on the people who teach it. Rely on the meaning, not on the words." Rely on wisdom, not on the walking, on the walking of the mind. Rely on the sutra that fully express the meaning, not on those that do not. As to relying on the Dharma, Dharma refers to the 12 divisions of uh, scripture. Follow this Dharma, not the people who teach it. With regard to relying on the meaning, the meaning itself is beyond debate of such matters as like against dislike, evil against virtue, firstly against truth. Hence, the words um, may indeed have a meaning, but the meaning is not words. Consider, for example, a person instructing us by pointing the moon with his finger to take words to be the meaning. It's like looking at the finger, not at the moon. The person would say, I'm not, I am pointing the moon with my finger in order to show it to you. Why do you look at my finger and then not the moon? Similarly, the words are fingers pointing to the, to, to pointing to the meaning. They are not a meaning itself. Hence, do not rely upon words. As to relying on the wisdom, wisdom is um, able to distinguish and then uh, measure good or evil. The walking of a mind always seeks pleasure and does not reach the essential, hence it is said, do not rely on mind. So Shakyamuni Buddha, the supreme teacher that shows us what to rely on, the teaching of the truth, that he made it clear we cannot rely on our own distinctions and the measurement. So I remember several times to hear the George Shinshu ministers giving a talk say, in a house full of good people, the fighting never ends. So um, with Japanese discussion group I'm attending, um, so uh, with the uh, New York Buddhist Church, 
uh, that I've been reading, we have been reading the book called We May Have a Radiant Face in the Morning uh, by the previous Hongan Jimonshu, uh, co uh, spiritual reader, Ko uh, Kosho Otani. There is a chapter about this. So usually our idea, good person, was someone who knows what right and always do the right thing. Okay? So if the house was full of good people, everyone would think and act correctly, and then they would all live together in harmony. So Monshu Kosho Otani mentioned that the story about the family, just like my family. One day, the mother was cleaning the house and had to move the china pot the father, the husband, um, was uh, taking care of, the, his favorite ones. So she, she moved the pot the, from the place it used to be uh, to the hallway for the vacuuming or something. The Hassan came home to school earlier than the usual, and he rushed into the room and he tipped pot over and breaking it. The mother said, I tried to clean the house before everyone came home. Can you be more careful? The son replied, It is your fault because you are the one who put the, this pot in usual place. So you have to apologize to, to dad. And the mother said, No, you are the one who broke his pot. You should apologize to dad. The argument um, hadn't ever ended. In the evening, the father came home and said that something that has a shape will eventually break. Nothing is um, eternal. Shikata ga nai. It can be helpful if the father got upset. Upset, the argument was more explored in the house. He simply accepted what, hap what has happened. The mother and the son both said, I'm so sorry, I should be more careful. So it, it occurred to me that the different um, perspective on what was uh, correct had given, um, had given the rights many fights in my life. So between parents and children, um, spouse, um, spouses and then our family members, or there are different um, theories about the what rights and wrong, when it comes to um, parenting, politics, even more simple things like cooking, drive, uh, cooking, driving, and so on. <laughs> Sorry. So when people living together, they think of themselves as good people who had the who had the right ideas and know the correct way to doing things. The conflicts and easily arise and then the fighting never end. The idea of the house full of good people is not just limited in a single family's home. We see similar patterns on the ongoing conflict between difficult, uh, the different groups in a society, religions of the country or nations of the world. We live in a world and with so many who see that the, who see themselves as the good people may have something to do with all of the conflict we see day after day. So this week, what have you seen in the news? There are a lots of good people hurting innocent people. There is no doubt that they believe themselves to be correct, the while others are wrong. Now, see what happens. In the book I read with the discussion group, we also said that uh, which is uh, even more might be surprising. In the whole of uh, bad people, the smile never end. The bad people could be uh, described as someone who's mistaken ideas and their wonderful uh, well, I'm sorry, mistaken ideas and the wrongful acts that cause harm to others. When I reckon to the truth, I am uh, the bad, per bad person, I can honestly acknowledge my own mistakes. So uh, if the mother cleaned the room, that she would say, oh, it was wrong, um, it was um, 
wrong of me uh, criticizing you to his son. So I'm so sorry. And hearing this, the son might say something like, oh, I should be more careful. I'm sorry too. A house full of uh, bad people uh, where each person acknowledge their own mistake and, and then try to understand the others, the um, perspective and surely the peace and surely the place where the smiles never end. In the Tani show, record in the Lament of the Divergences, we found that the remarkable phrases, even a good person attained, attained birth in the pure land, so it goes without saying that an evil person will. These words in Shinran Shoni makes it clear that the uncompassion vow of Amida Buddhas is um, in, intended to precisely to provide a path to the liberation for the bad person. When awakened to the real reality that I am the bad person, I am inspired to seek the past truth, recognizing the past to truth and the nowhere to be found in myself, um, in my self-centered mind. I turn my ears to the truth of awakening expressed in the teaching of the Buddha. The good teachers aren't the one who tells us what is right and wrong at our convenience. They open our eyes to be ready to listen to the true teaching. So yesterday at the BCA's education class, the Center of Buddhist Education online class, Reverend Dr. David Matsumoto talked about his three teachers. The title was My Revered Dharma Teachers. He explained how three teachers had significant impact on his life, the sharing memories of each teacher that gave him a deeper understanding of Buddhism. So everyone has a teacher who inspired them. The meaning of the meeting teachers can um, change our life. A teacher does not have to be a teacher or a minister. That it might be someone we know, a relative, a friend, or a neighbor, or someone we have met before. It could be the, the someone in a book, on the TV, or on the social media. So it could be a pet, an animal, birds, and an insect. Sometimes it flowers blooming in a sidewalk. Among so many teachers, there are many opportunities to consider meaning of our own lives and then um, the teaching of the truth. At the end of my um, today's message, I would like to read a passage from Shinran Shoni's hymns again. Uh, please join me, Gasho. My eyes, the being, my eyes being hindered by blind passion, I cannot receive the right that grasps me. Yet the great compassion without tiring illuminates me always. Namanda Butsu, Namanda Butsu. Thank you. Thank you.